Why is it America, a country which is only 250 years old, less than 250 years old, with only 300 over million people, the Americans think that they know better what is for China, which probably has a 3,000 year history and a population four times larger. And Chinese history has taught the Chinese people something very fundamental, that when the center is weak, the people suffer because there's chaos. But when the center is strong, the people are better off. So from the point of view of Chinese history, when you have a strong leader, it's good for the country. And so at the time when the Chinese people say, hey, good, we have a strong leader, the Americans are saying, what's wrong with you? Why don't you get rid of your strong leader? Now, the fourth dimension is the cultural dimension. And this is in some ways the hardest dimension to speak about. But in the cultural dimension, we're going to deal with something that is subconscious and that is buried in the imagination. And here it is a fact that going back hundreds of years, there has been in the Western imagination a deep fear, the yellow peril. Now, no Westerner will ever speak about the yellow peril. They will deny that it exists. But the yellow peril is like the invisible elephant in the room. It's there. It's playing a role. It's influencing decisions, but you can't talk about it. No Westerner will ever speak about the yellow peril. They will deny that it exists. But the yellow peril is like the invisible elephant in the room. It's there. It's playing a role. It's influencing decisions, but you can't talk about it. And that dimension is going to be very difficult for US and China to manage in the coming years. And then the fifth dimension that they'll have to deal with is what I call the primacy dimension. And what do I mean by the primacy dimension? Now, the United States has got very used to being number one for a very long time. And it's almost impossible for Americans to think of becoming number two. And I know this from first-hand experience because many years ago, maybe five years ago, I was invited to go to Davos to chair a forum on the future of American power. And there I was on the stage, like a stage like this. And next to me, there were two American senators, Conger and Chambliss. There was a New York Congresswoman, Nita Lowy, and a very senior American official, Mike Froman. So I asked these four panelists a question. What, what do you see? What do you see as the future of American power? He said, oh, we'll be number one. We'll be number one. We'll be number one. So I scratched my head. I said, you know, I've seen some data that says maybe within 10 years, 15 years, China's GNP could become bigger. So how will America react? And their answers shocked me. Their answers were, oh, we'll be number one. We'll be number one. But luckily, Senator Cocker, who sadly stepped down, he was the smartest of the lot. He said, Mr. Chairman, I can do the maths. I can see where you're taking us. I'm not going there. Because for any American politician to have words coming out of his mouth saying, oh, America will become number two, he's dead. It's politically suicidal in America for any American politician to speak of becoming number two. 
because for any American politician to have words coming out of his mouth saying, oh, America will become number two, he's dead. It's politically suicidal in America for any American politician to speak of becoming number two. But just look at this. It is inevitable. It's going to happen. But you can't speak about it in the land of free speech in America. But you can't speak about it in the land of free speech in America. So it's going to create, quite obviously, a big problem when it happens.